So you fancy growing a bit of oregano now, do ya? Now here what I've got behind me is a plant called oregano. It's a perennial herb, which means it comes up every year and it really is typical of Sicilian and Italian Greek cooking, things like that. It's um, quite reputable with putting on pizza. But us Greeks, we like to put it in our meat grills and we like it um, on top of salads and things like that. And it's really, really versatile and it's got a lot of good essential oils um, in the plant. And what I really, really love about this plant is there are many, many different variations of this plant. This oregano I've got behind me here is more of a European French type oregano, but um, one of the most favorable ones is the Greek oregano. And this is a lot more pungent in smell. And last year I went to Italy, I went to Sicily, and a lot of the people there were saying that their particular oregano was particularly good. And I actually have got a sprig of that, um, or a few sprigs of that today, and I'm gonna be sowing that for you. Now I've previously done a video about the Cypriot oregano and how spicy that is. And I've discussed that the further to the Middle East you go, the hotter and spicier it is. And when I say spicy, I mean literally, if you put the leaves in your mouth of the, the Cypriot one, it actually, it's hot like chili. You actually sort of have a warmth to it. So really, really interesting herb. Actually, some of the, um, the people will drink it in a tea in the Mediterranean. Um, it's got a lot of beneficial essential oils in it. Now, the best way to grow this, to be honest, is just to go and get a seed packet from the shop. Um, Greek oregano is quite widespread. But if you really want to experiment, one fun thing that I've done is I've bought um, a seed mix from, usually from Amazon. You can get them um, of whichever one you want. Um, Cypress oregano, um, Cretan oregano. And the great thing with oregano is when they harvest it, these flower heads will give up their seed quite easily. And if you look at the bottom of any oregano herb mix, 90% of the time you have little black cluster of seeds at the bottom of the pack if you put it in a transparent pack. And you can quite easily germinate them. And I did this with the cypress oregano mix. And I would recommend giving that a go. Um, if you've got a particularly warm, sunny spot, it's just a lot more pungent. It's got a lot more thyme aromas to it. And something that I'll show you here today is my Cypriot oregano that I've been growing. Um, I lost a few last winter because we had a really wet winter. So if you're gonna go down the route of growing them sort of oreganos and you have a wet climate like we do in the UK, you might wanna think about putting it in a rain shadow near a building, something like that. But generally, if you wanna grow oregano, really it isn't too fussy. If you give it warmth, light and somewhere that doesn't get too wet you shouldn't go too far wrong and as i say i like to sow different types of oregano and experiment with them because i just find that the the more european strain like this isn't as pungent but i mean it's still got a quite a unique very classic oregano smell and I will harvest this on mass. I will put this into soups and stews and things like that. So if you wanna see the sewing process that I use, I'm gonna show you now what I did with that wild Sicilian mountain oregano and show you how to sew that. Right, so this is some of the Sicilian oregano that I bought in um, Sicily and it's picked from the mountains. And what you should do when you buy these sort of things is gather all of the the vegetation down to the bottom corner and then what you want to do is grab it this is always the same I find with oregano this is how I extracted the, the, the seeds from the Cypriot oregano and if you look in there you'll see a little grouping of black seeds right so what you want to do is just keep taking the foliage from the top and the seeds will fall I'm sure now you can see the dark black and brown seeds at the base now a lot better um, just keep taking the top stuff out and you know you will end up with uh, f quite a lot of seeds more than you get in a seed packet um, and if you want get a bit of white paper if um, at the end and you know put them in an egg cup and just sow them and see how you get on take a look look at that there's a few hundred seeds in there so that's perfect 
It's actually quite funny, when I was in um, the shop in Sicily, the guy was watching me and I found this wild oregano and I got all excited and I was saying, oh, this is fantastic, well, I've got to buy it. I was buying loads of it and the guy came up to me with a worried look on his face and he says, my friend, he says, not for smoking. So <laughs> it was that moment I realised perhaps, you know, there's very few people that get that excited about wild oregano as me. Um, but there you go. Um... I had to sort of explain to him that I had no interest in smoking it. So there you go. So we're just going to go and pop this lot up now and see how we get on. Right, so for this sort of thing, I like to knock up a, a clay loam. So I usually get like a topsoil loam because I feel that, you know, even when you want a well-drained soil, well-drained's fine, but you want something that will retain the moisture while it's being well-drained. If it's just well-drained, it's going to be dry all the time and that's especially not good for, for seeds. So I do a third compost, a third loam, and a third sand, and that should do us nicely. I'm just going to sprinkle these around the top, just sprinkle them around. It's quite a lot of seed, so if it does take, we're going to have a bit of a mat, but that's okay. Once you get a few going, then you've got your future supply. You can clone them anyway. You don't have to sow them again. And, you know, you don't want to bury these too much, oregano seeds. These are really small seeds, so you're literally looking at just a slight fluttering and um, you know, I actually sowed it once without even covering it at all. So really careful now. Right, and the, 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 you know, when you water this, the, the 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 watering will cover some seeds and bring some seeds to the top. That's why you always want a quite dense sowing. Let's give this a go. Now, really, if you're going to try and sow oregano, try and do it in March on a sunny window ledge. That means by the time it gets to summertime you know you've got your young plants and you can plant them out or put them into pots i mean they do really really well on a sunny patio in a pot um you know they will take cold temperatures in the winter but i find if they're too wet in winter that's where you can have problems now i would put them in a propagator keep them warm and try and add a little bit of sand with your mix if you can do them in seed trays i prefer to put them in two liter pots so there's a little more depth there um, just keep them moist, moist until germination and then when they pop through try and water them a bit less take the cling film off the top so you get a bit of air to them or the open the propagator lid and they should come along just fine now what i found is they have quite a deep penetrating root system even when the plants are sort of so high if you have them in a two litre pot and in my polytunnel i've put them in in the pots and they've actually the roots even though the plants are quite small the roots will come out the bottom of the pot so that's really typical of the sort of environment they're used to, really like hilly, arid, rocky environments. And they'll put their roots down because they're trying to get to the water and they're quite a penetrative root. I was quite surprised when I saw that. Just to show you how wild in nature Oregano is, um, we live in a place called the Chiltern Hills and I went to a warm hillside and I was doing um, an ecology survey there and I actually noticed on some of the chalk, there was actually, I said that looks like Oregano and it was actually a just must be just a sort of wild native oregano that we have here in the UK but it was I could looked at it and I thought that's definitely oregano so you know it, I, I smelt a bit of it it wasn't too pungent but it had quite an interesting sort of sweet smell to it so there you go I mean they, they, every region probably has its own form of oregano if if the environment is right now one of the most effective ways to propagate this is actually just to get a plant get it robust and to bend down the stalks, simply bend them down. I sometimes just snap them a bit and then I just peg them down into the ground and just cover them with a little bit of soil. Most of the mint family is doable like this. And what you will find is then within a sort of month or two, you'll have the roots coming down and then you can just pot them on separately. So you can continually divide your stock. What I did with this oregano here is I, every couple of years, I let it get into a clump and then I just get a really sharp little saw knife and I just cut them into loads of sections, get all them, just spread them along the backs of the beds here because the backs of the beds here, they, they suffer a little bit with the water from the hedge and I just find it's quite dry, quite sunny, perfect place to grow oregano. I think that's one thing every gardener should try and do is eventually allow what, what the most suitable places to reveal themselves to you in regard to specific plants and oregano really is one if you get the situation why you don't really have to care about it you just leave it and it'll come up every year 
and you'll have it for your cooking whenever you want it. Now, when your oregano plants get a little bit tall, what I find to do is just at the end of the year, you just chop them down to the ground. See like this stem here, for instance, you can harvest it. And what you usually do is you bunch it all up together, you tie it around the top, you have a little dry area, and you just hang them upside down like that, preferably with a tray underneath, so if you drop, if you drop any, and you just dry it like that and store it like that. Or you can just strip the leaves off afterwards. Um, um, a good one to do is to strip the leaves off and actually put this in water. Um, it's actually better with the younger stems if you're gonna take cuttings, but I've seen people successfully do it in water. Um, what you can do is just, if you go right to the base, you'll usually find a little rootlet. Let's see if I can find that. No, I haven't quite succeeded there, but you, I'm sure you can make out that that, you know, there's, there's the odd little hair there. You could you could probably root that very easily. And yeah, it's it's just such a, an amazing herb with different varieties. So I would certainly recommend try and find one that you really like the smell of and try and just germinate some of the seeds from some of the shop bought stuff. Um, if you like a particular oregano, you don't have to just get the stuff in the garden centre. Some of the stuff from the garden centre I've tried just wasn't um, as pungent as I like it, especially going to Cyprus and having the one they have there. So I was really happy to germinate my own seeds. So really when it comes to soil, you don't have to make it amazingly well drained. In the early days when you're starting them off, I would put, um, I would use compost. Um, sometimes what you can do is just use compost which has been sort of used a couple of times. Just try and make sure there's no seeds in it and sterilise it because the seeds can rot. But I really, really find it quite an easy plant to grow and it is a really, it really will reward you. And it's not like mint where you put it in the ground and you're worried about it completely escaping. It will, it will behave itself to a degree. This is an example of the Cypriot one I got here. And um, you can really see the sort of color difference between the sort of European version, the French oregano and the Cypriot oregano. Let's just take a little sprig of that and show you. So yeah. I'll tell you what, that's already, I can smell that really strong, but I can barely smell that. So, I mean, even though I do like the, the taste and the flavor of this one, I, I, I cannot stress enough. Try and get one of the stronger strains, the Syrian, the Sicilian one. Go online, get yourself some Greek oregano from Greece, not the stuff they sell in the supermarket, and, um, and propagate some of that stuff, and just try and make sure that it's in a well-drained, sunny position. So, Really, to sum up what I would say with oregano is, you know, it, it is a wild plant. So just give it the well-drained situation, sunny situation, um, divide it as much as you can, find one you like, and just keep dividing and keep propagating. Um, all right, and you should be fine. So there you have it, oregano. It's great to have in the kitchen. There's many, many different types. Give it sun well drained situation it rewards you every year don't get too upset about the stuff in the supermarket go out there get yourself some oregano mix look for them little seeds and germinate some yourself get out there and grow some